This conference will now be recorded. Good evening. We're up to the Open City Council meeting in October 18, 2021. Mayor Potem Johnson? Here. Councilman Mitchell? Here. Councilman Noah? Here. Councilman Osmer? Here. And Mayor Walgora? Here. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Potom Johnson? Yeah. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Noah? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. And Mayor Walagora? Aye. Motion carried. Approval of the minutes for regular session of October 4, 2021. Any issues? Changes? Citizen appearing before council on agenda and non agenda items are allowed five minutes each to address your concerns. If you'd like to do so in your live with us, uh, please come to the podium and state your name and address for our records. This is the only time this evening, with the exception of the public hearing for special assessments, if that's your topic, uh, please wait for we'll open that public hearing. But any other topics, please come to the podium. Anyone on the virtual meeting? All right, next up, we have the public hearing. Now, this is public hearing for special assessment number 124, Merchant Street, from Miller Street to Lake Street. Open public the uh, public hearing and uh, report on the special assessment roll. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. Um, at the September 20th council meeting, uh, we had the resolution that was approved, which um, fi uh, filed the, the rule, and it also set the public hearing for today's date. Since that time, uh, we became aware that the house at 611 Merchant Street had been sold in June. Um, when we originally printed the wool, you can see up there, um, it's the second one down with the line through it. Um, I, so after consultation with attorney Piper, uh, we decided that the best course of action for this, um, so Ms. Mr. Kelly, actually, I guess I should back up. Mr. Kelly uh, passed away. He had signed the petition back in 2019. In June, Andrew and Maria Lindahl purchased the property. Um, when we build this just recently, uh, it pulled in the current owner's name, so I had to go in there and manually change and update it. Um, after consultation with attorney Piper, we felt that um, if this had been billed on time, it should have gone to John Kelly for his estate. So that's what we're doing here. I um, have already sent a letter to um, his son. I haven't heard anything back from him either way, um, and I don't he's here today um, I don't know if he's virtual either but um, that's the only change that I know this is a one-time assessment oh, build. Um, it's billed in installments so they have already received their bill and they have until the 31st to make that first payment if it's not paid it goes on the December taxes out of curiosity, how will that work for Mr. Kelly's estate? Kelly's estate. We're going to have to adjust that one manually. Each time. And this um, estate will have to be billed outside, wherever he lives. So it won't be a tax bill, it'll be like they'll just get a bill and then they also be assessment. We do have a, um, a separate module that we can create invoices in. So we'll probably use that system to bill him. Can the state pay it all at once? Sure. Yep. Any of them can. So, educate me. <laughs> so, if any of these other residents sell their house during the term of, of the that the assessment is being taken out, they deal with that from from buyer seller standpoint as what as to whether they pay that off prior to selling their house or they turn that over to the new to the new residents. That's a tough question. Can I answer that, Anna? Yeah, go ahead. Can I, can I approach you? She's the new owner. <laughs> sure. Where do you want me to be? Just 
here or up there. Um, when we bought the house and we had our title checked, because we have title insurance, and we had our title checked, the special assessment was not on there. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> but it will be now. Well, but it, it is years. now, technically. But even up until two months ago, it still said the estate of John and Anna, or John and Margaret Cavett. It didn't even say our name. Okay. So, so she did the Northern Abstract didn't even see it on there. Right. So if we had billed this earlier, it would have gone to his estate. So it's our fault that it didn't get processed in time. Uh, with, with special assessments, the majority of the, the those living on the street have to sign a petition. Mm -hmm. Did they reach majority, or does this one signature say I'm having that definition? Um, we I, did meet majority. I believe they did. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there there are, I think, uh, one for sure that I know of that didn't sign it, but it's majority rule, so everybody gets their share. And John didn't sign it. John yes. Kelly did sign yes. it. Yes, I have the petition right there with his but, name on it. But removing his name, majority was still in that. Um, still Sorry. No, that's okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five with his signature. And there are, I think, seven parcels. Oh, yeah. So even if we would have only had four, it still would have been enough. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Any other public comment on that topic? Close public hearing. We have resolution 2021-18 confirming the role for the 2019 special assessment. Okay. 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 Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Noack? Yes. Councilman Hosmer? Mayor Walgora and Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. Motion carried. Tonight's consent agenda is a bill to be allowed, allowed in the amount of $380,074.97. Here's a budget amendment request to move budgeted funds from DPW to sidewalks. And C is a mayoral, mayoral appointment of Canner Costello to the compensation committee for a five year term expiring on October 18th, 2026. I move we approve the consent mm -hmm. agenda as presented. Okay. Councilman Noah? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Mayor Walagora? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson? Yes. And Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. We have several announcements tonight. Uh, the first one is from October 19th to November 2nd, 2021. City residents can register to vote with the city clerk. He is writing candidates for the November 2nd, 2021 general election must file a declaration of intent form with the city clerk by 4 p.m. on October 22nd, 2021. See the public accuracy test for the voting equipment will be performed on October 26th, 2021 at 4 p.m. in the main level conference room at City Hall. And he is a Halloween trip for three hours in the city of Alpena will be 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. on Sunday, October 31st, 2021. Proclamations report of officers. Uh, first up is the introduction of the planning and zoning and development director and city managers. Good evening. Um, I wanted to do a, an introduction of Montiel Birmingham. She is our new planning, development, and zoning director, and she has been here for um, six working days. So she is hitting the ground running, and we are very happy to fill that position. And I wanted to give her an opportunity to come up and just give a brief introduction of herself. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, um, my name is Montiel Birmingham. I was born and raised in Alpena, have lived um, in Grand Rapids, Michigan for the last 17 years. Um, so my history has been in the retail world. Um, I've worked for Meyer at their corporate office in Grand Rapids in um, merchandising as well as their supply chain division. So most recently as um, their inbound logistics manager for the grocery consumables and businesses. So 
definitely a change for me, but I'm excited to be back in the area. Um, I have uh, my husband, Brent, and my two boys. Um, they're nine and 12. Um, so we're all very happy to be back and have lots of family here. So thank you for having me and, and for the introduction. I appreciate it. Thank you. We have the second reading of Ordinance 21 Old Tax 463, which amends Chapter 86, Taxation, Article 5, being of school tax exemption, Section 86 through 95 and 86 through 99. Uh, this would not be read in its entirety pursuant to uh, council policy, but we did uh, make the changes suggested by council at the last meeting. So 86.95.2 was added. That made it clear that each unit in the proposed development would still be required to pay the $20 per unit recycling surcharge or any modification uh, of that, uh, in addition to the 4% pilot in section one. Uh, we also put in specifically that it was a 25 year mortgage loan. And my understanding was that that was uh, confirmed by the developer that's a 25 year term. We added uh, section 86 100 that indicated that any extension of that original 25 year term would have to be made by further approval, uh, further application, excuse me, and approval by the municipal council. And we also put in language that's non transferable by the developer without approval of the city as well. So those were the uh, suggested changes. So if the council is comfortable with those, we would just need a vote uh, either yay or nay. Very good. Yeah, I don't think there were any other issues, and I it seemed it seemed that the last meeting our guests were going to be fine with that. And yeah, they're online. Yeah. If I remember correctly, um, I guess I guess before we vote, uh, I would ask that the representative from Hope Hope uh, has any opposition to the changes that we made that we discussed at our last meeting. And I did send it to them ahead of time and didn't receive any negative feedback. And we approve 21 and 4 Second. Councilman Osmer? <clears throat> Mayor Walagora? Aye. Mayor Potem Johnson? Aye. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Council, yes. Motion Next, we have the second reading of Ordinance 21464, which amends Chapter 62, Personnel, Article 3, Retirement Systems, uh, Division 1, General, Generally, Section 62 through 74, Termination of Membership, Reinstatement. Once again, consistent with Council policy, this would not be read in its entirety. Last time uh, we were here when this was presented, it was to Clear up any potential ambiguity in the old language. It uh, clearly makes it, um, well, at least from my perspective, it clearly points out that if the person has met the other requirements for vesting, their uh, termination of employment would not knock them out of the retirement system. And it also just clean clean out of our little Travers Um This was all written in the male gender previously, so this uh, changes. Uh, that male gender to his or his or his or throughout the work. So uh, once again, just need to vote yay or nay. I move we approve 21 and 460. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Just guess. <laughs> Mayor Wellagora. Mayor Pro Johnson. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Nowak? Yes. And Councilman Osmer? Motion carried. Yep. Next up is the Michigan Municipal Treasurer's Association of Chief. Okay. Um, Leland is, uh, I believe she's with us virtually. Um, but please join me in congratulating Leland Bruning, Deputy Clerk Treasurer Finance Director, on her attainment of the Michigan Certified Professional Treasurer designation through the Michigan Municipal Treasurers Association. Leland has been working on this certification since her promotion in 2017. 
She has gained a vast amount of knowledge in the treasurer field that will help her succeed in her position and also benefit the residents of the city of Alpena. Congratulations, Layla. Thank you. Just like the one that I did, um, it's a three-year program, but it got spread over four because of COVID. Yep. First quarter fiscal year 2022 financial report. All right. Since we have so much time, that's the last thing on the agenda. I guess I can talk for an hour now about this. The fun stuff. <laughs> okay. This is the report uh, for the first quarter ending September 30th, 2021, and we should be at 25% of budget for revenues and expenditures. So right off the bat, you can see that um, there's more lines in there, and that's because of the chart of accounts conversion that we did August 4th. Um, it took um, basically everybody that was being charged to 170, which we we're calling city hall, and breaking them out by function, and that's a requirement by the state. So some of the new ones that got added in there are um, city council, you have your own budget, city manager, the accounting department, clerk, um, treasurer, we have a retirement pension, Let's see what else is new, engineering, Planning, zoning, code enforcement. There is additional ones. You'll see them in the expenditures section. But okay, so first what I wanted to highlight is that there's been a lot of moving around of budget. And if you look at I use this right there, you can see that these numbers are the same. So the original budget was 10.5 million and it's still at 10.5 million for revenues. After I've moved, um, you can see that this was increased and City Hall was pretty much put in here. There's still a little bit of budget here. Um, down here, there's there's some, and then these are the same, but some of these are new, so they don't have an original budget. So um, in, the, in the explanation of variance for the revenues, the first line general is at 67.54% of budget. Oh, could you go back, Charlie? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, it's, it's high because of summer tax collection. The next one down, City Hall, this department was split into numerous other departments and the budget was moved. That's why there's nothing in amended budget. Um, city Council, City Manager, and accounting department, those are all new departments and I didn't put any budget in there because I kind of wanted to see where, um, just kind of monitor it throughout the year to adjust budget. The accounting department has negative $194 and that's because of a reversing entry. The clerk treasurer department, 209. Um, at first I was told we could have a combined department but then I found out otherwise and some of the budget didn't get moved until October. So that's why, because this reports at September 30th, so there's still some budget in there. Information technology um, is at 20.99%. That's a little bit low, and that's because um, we haven't received fiber rent yet. That doesn't happen until later in the year. Treasurer department doesn't have any budget, just like the other ones, like city council and city manager. Retirement pension is at 0% revenue, and that's because we didn't receive the payment from PNC until October, so after this report. Police is at 19.87% of budget. Um, the major things in there is that we haven't received any federal grant money and also no liquor license revenue. Fire EMS is only at 4.61%. And that is because we still have budget in there for the township fire services. Um, we just, we haven't, that's going to be at the next meeting that we're going to um, propose the, the adjustments to the budget because of that. 
Um, also transport fees are negative due to the annual reversing entry. We haven't received funds for a budgeted ambulance yet. So those are the major things that we haven't received um, or there's budget in there that we're not gonna receive. So we, we have some adjust adjustments to make. Public Works um, is a little bit over the 25%. It's at 29.23, and that's because of the annual receipt of fireworks donations. Engineering is right on at 25%. Lights has no revenue received yet. They usually don't receive much anyway. We've only budgeted $1,000. Cemetery is at 37%, and unfortunately, that's due to an increase in burials, lot sales, and monument permits. Um, planning is right on at 25%. Zoning, that's at 42%, and that's one that I'm going to have to increase the budget to reflect um, increased zoning fees. Some of these I didn't really have an idea of how much to move out of the old city hall department, so that's another one I'm monitoring and we'll have to correct. Code enforcement is only at 5.67%, and that's because Numerous bills were sent in October, so we are waiting on payment for those. And then Parks and Rec um, is at 0.94% received. And that's because grant revenue has not been received and also some anticipated donations that we had budgeted for also have not been received. So overall for revenue for the general fund, we are at 43.75%. We are about 300,000 more as compared to last fiscal year at this time. So last fiscal year was 4.3 and we're at 4.6. So overall, I'd say we're on track with that. Uh, to the expenditures, please. So this one here, you'll see a lot more departments. The additional ones in here that we didn't have in the revenue is uh, External audit, board of review, um, the assessor, elections, building grounds. So building and grounds in the general fund is just for city hall. It's not for public safety or the DPW building, it's just city hall. Also in there is uh, city attorney, human resources, economic development. So this one, is see, at the bottom, we had originally budgeted to take $233,564 from fund balance. And if you recall, the reason for that was because it's really high. Um, it's, I think, 28 or 29%. So we are trying to reduce that. Now, if you look at the amended budget in the next column, now we're at negative 429,000. And that is due primarily to um, carry over projects that we had budgeted for in last fiscal year that didn't get done. So we brought the funds forward and you saw those in budget amendments. So um, we are anticipating to add to fund balance for fiscal year 21 that just ended. We are having our audit um, next week on the 25th, they'll be here. And um, so far it looks like we're going to be adding. So that will take care of those um, carryover projects. But just an explanation of the variances and the expenditures. In general, it's, uh, it's pretty high. It's at 97.71%. And that's because um, the payment that we give to Target Alpina, the $20,000 payment, that's half of what they get annually. Um, it went into this department, but that's not where it was budgeted. So it's actually going to get moved down to here, the economic development. It's budgeted in there. So right now that one's at 0%. So I think that should bring general down to about 30%, which is still over, but a lot better. Okay, um, like I mentioned about City Hall, this department was split into numerous other departments and budget was moved. That is why it's at 0%. City Council looks good, it's under budget. City Manager is slightly over and that is because of annual OPEB and deferred comp payments. So when we have one-time payments, it kind of skews the, um, 
the expenses for the year. But as we progress, it catches up and it looks better. But that's what that's primarily due to. Um, some of these, like the accounting department, uh, the budget department, clerk, those, the budget wasn't moved until after September 30th. So that's, let me show you, it's over in here. Um, information technology is at 20.73%. It's under budget, which is great. Um, but it's because capital expenditures that were budgeted have not been incurred yet. Board of Review has $164 of expenses, but no budget. That's because I haven't put one in there yet. Um, yeah, some of these, they weren't moved until September 30th. So it, it, this report is, it'll look better next quarter. <laughs> um, elections department. Um, we never had an elections department before, but we do now. And so far we're at 16% of budget. We will have more expenses as we get closer to the election. Building and grounds, we're at 12.27% of budget. Um, that is because there's been, there is capital expenditures that were budgeted, but have not been incurred yet. City attorney is over a little bit because of the annual OPEB payment that I mentioned earlier. Retirement pension is at 0.71%. It's low because of the annual payment, or it's low because the annual payment hasn't been made yet. It won't be until December. Police, fire, public works, those all look good. They're just under the 25%. Engineering is a little high at 32%, and that is, again, because of the annual OPEB and deferred comp payments. Lights is low. Again, capital expenditures budget, but not incurred yet. Cemetery is high um, because salaries and wages are running high. I'm going to continue to monitor that one. It may have to do with having uh, summer help in there. I may have to transfer some budget from public works for that, but like I mentioned, I'll, I'll monitor that. Uh, planning is at 6.81% and zoning is at 8.92%. And both of those are because we didn't have any, sal uh, any salary or wages because we didn't have a director. Code enforcement is high at 71.83%. It's because of the contracted mowing expense, which is seasonal. Um, as I mentioned about the $20,000 target payment for economic development, uh, parks and rec is a little bit low at 20.57%. Again, because of capital expenditures being budgeted and not incurred. Building authority, this is the one that we used to we used to um, pay the annual payment for the DPW building out of this department, but now that has been moved to transfers out other financing uses. So the total of these two equals this amended budget. We did make the annual payment. Um, yes, so that, that is 33.37% of that budget. So overall, we are at 21.89% of budget for total expenditures. <clears throat> so we're, we're under budget for that. Any questions on any of this? No, I think I answered my own. My own question was, if we have no budget for planning the zoning, if you want people to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I said no to the amendment. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yes. So right there is yes. what you mentioned. Yep. Yes. Okay, next page. On to the cash balances and investments. Ooh. Can you zoom that? Okay. okay, so the ones that I just want to highlight here, um, major local streets, the cash balances are high, and that's because projects have been completed but not for yet. Building inspection has decreased. Um, so, oh, right, right here, 7,287 versus 130,000 a year ago. And that's because we're using up fund balance as we had budgeted for that. 
the Department of Public Works construction is at 406,000 versus 262,000 a year ago. And that's because internal loans were repaid. Sewer and water cash balances are higher than a year ago because same thing as major and local streets, the projects have been completed but not paid for yet. The stores cash balance is negative. Um, not too worried about this. It happens all the time. You can see it did two years ago. Um, this fund increases and decreases with the purchase and use of inventory. Um, down towards the bottom, you can scroll that up, please, Charlie. Retirement is at 24.9 million um, versus 25.1 million a year ago. These amounts are book value. The market value at September 30th, 21 was 31.67 million, which decreased, it did decrease in September from 32.94 on September 1st. We did have numerous retirees this past year that have pulled their money out of the system. Going down, the last thing is retiree health care. You can see that the balance is at 1.976 million versus 1.77 a year ago. Again, these amounts are book value. The market value at September 30th was 2.26 million and it decreased, it decreased um, from 2.34 at the beginning of September. Some of that increase, uh, probably all of the increase, I would say, is due to um, our annual payment that we make in July. It was over 300,000. So that's all I have. Any questions on that? Anything else? Thank you, Great report. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson, Councilman Mitchell, yes. Councilman Noah, yes. Councilman Osmer, and Mayor Walagora. Motion carried. I need to hear you.